Do you know, it's not very often that you get the opportunity to announce not only to you, but to all the people around the world that watch the ministry here from Destiny on our broadcast. And we want to welcome you to them. It's not very often you get the opportunity to say, do you know, this is going to be a good word from a good God, from a good guy who's one of our pastors, and it happens to be my son. You know, thank God for Pastor Wesley. Hear the word now. Come on, let's give him a big welcome. Thank you. Well, today I want to talk to you about true strength. So, as all good sermons... I'm not doing any more of that. That's a... What is strength? Is it muscles? Yes. If you say strength, you think of this image, this chap with his, his muscles. Or is it that you can do lots of work and lots of energy? Uh, you might think of a, a builder with a sledgehammer or something like that. Or maybe you think of strength as being those people that have that great emotional strength. That you know they can get through tough times and they still walk out being strong. They can handle a lot of baggage. They can be heavily burdened and we describe people as being full of strength just because they can handle a situation. Maybe strength is the fact that you can handle depression or mental health issues and you've just got great mental strength. Do you know strength is really hard to measure? Strength isn't measured in how much weight you can lift. It's not measured in the lifestyle that you can live. It's it's measured in something very different. And today I want to talk to you about true strength. True strength is actually your measure of how much you can achieve of what God has got planned for you. So that's what my sermon today is all about, really. And it's how we can have that true strength to achieve God's plans and purposes for you and for me. So today we're going to have a look at a great strong man in the Bible called Samson. He was renowned for being the strongest man in the Bible. He was the Bible's bodybuilder. And he has one of those names that means something wonderful, and his name means sunshine. It's just the name for a bodybuilder, isn't it? <laughs> to be called sunshine. And he was born in a time when people weren't really living it right. People weren't getting it right for God as they should have been and they'd been delivered into the hands of the Philistine, into their enemy, and they'd been, they'd been under this enemy's rule for the last 40 years. And in Judges 13, verse 5, uh, God talks to Samson's mom and says, because you will conceive and give birth to a son. So Judges 13, 5, no razor may be used on his head because the boy is to be a Nazarite, set apart to God from birth. He will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistine. And in 13 verse 24, and the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. Do you know when you do things right before God, it's very simple that God wants you to grow and God wants you to be blessed. That is normal for you and me when we're following God's plan and we're part of his thing. So let's have a little bit more of a look at Samson. Now Samson, you'd expect to be a big strapping fellow except for the fact that nobody could really understand where his source of strength came from. So you know all these pictures, if you go and Google image, Samson, you expect this man with arms out here and a back out here. But if they'd have done that, why didn't everybody understand where his strength came from? Why did it take a temptress to try and understand where his strength came from? Why did nobody expect it to be his muscles? He probably just looked like Regular, average Joe. Do you know, so often in life, when God wants you to do something incredible, he does it even though you don't think you can physically do what God's asked you to do. That's when a miracle takes place. If God needed somebody to be an absolute, enormous powerhouse, well, actually, he could have done it in his own strength. But Samson definitely did all he did through God's strength. But he was physically strong at those specific moments in life. 
We need to find a place that we can grow and find our source of true, true strength. We learn from the story of Samson that the source of his true strength was in his hair, in part of his Nazarite vow. And we need to find what our source of true strength is. Because God has a unique call and purpose for you. The source of your strength is probably not that you shave your head or not. It's probably not for you to be a Nazarite vow. If God's called you to have a Nazarite vow, that's fine, follow it. If God's called you to do something else in life, follow that because that is what is important for you is to follow what God wants you to do. And then from that strength, we can do those supernatural things that God has got planned for us. So Samson is actually a bit of a negative story because he kept messing up. It's been a challenge to prepare this sermon to try and feel like I found positive points. Because actually, we could just have a, here's what not to do. So in some ways, we're going to have a look at some of the things that Samson did that weakened him, that took him out of God's plan, that, that removed him from the true strength that God had planned for him right at the very beginning. Samson was created for something absolutely incredible and really blew it and blew it again and blew it again and blew it again and blew it again. And he blew it in his early life, married the wrong woman. And then in Judges 15, 20, you've got this little verse in the middle of there that we all forget about that says, Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. So he blew it. Then he got it right for 20 years. Then he blew it again. And actually, there's a lot we can learn from Samson in the middle of this because he knew how to get it right. And he knew how to get it wrong. And he kept getting it wrong and getting it wrong and getting it wrong again. So I want to have a look at a few things that I think from Samson's life are going to be part of you gaining true strength in your life. Number one is all about the support network, the team. Do you know every professional athlete, they talk about the team behind them that makes them great. Their trainers, their physios, their nutritionists. Do you know, so often we feel so isolated as an individual, and God has never called us to be isolated. He's called us to be part of a family, part of a fellowship, part of a local body. He's caused you to be part of a natural family of mums and dads and brothers and sisters and friends. And he's also caused us to be part of a church family. So we've got great strength around us with that as well. So let's have a look in Judges 14, verses 1 to 3. Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. And when he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. And his father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. This is step one. Samson's team is saying, don't go there. Timnar is on the other side of the mountains. It's in the Philistine territory. It's not with his own people. It's not where God intended for him to be. It wasn't totally ridiculous for him to go and find a wife there, but it definitely wasn't the wisest thing that he could have done. And Samson, right at the beginning of his life, chose to reject what his mother and father had said to him. He knew what he should have been doing that was right. He knew what his team had taught him for all those years beforehand. He knew what God's promise really was for him, but he still went and got the wrong wife. And even when a warning came from his mother and his father, he still said, go and get her for myself. Do you know, are you listening to your support team? Are you listening to pastors? Are you listening to teachers? Are you listening to people in your church who want the best for you? Because actually your support team is there to help give you strength. They're there to help to build you up. They're there to want to try and make things good for you. They're there to want to stop you having some of the pitfalls in life that rob you of strength. Do you know a good church wants to build you up, not tear you down? A good church wants to strengthen you. A good church wants to give you the wisdom that stops you making the same mistakes that other people have made again. So often, we make the same mistake again and again and again and again and again. 
I don't want to be one of those people that keeps making the same mistakes as other people. Let's learn some wisdom from those people in our support team that can help us avoid the pitfalls of life. Why should we all fall down the same pits in life that the generation before has fallen down? Let's have some support around us that says, whoa, don't go there. Samson's mum and father were saying, don't go there. And Samson still went there. And Samson was so convinced that she was the right one for him. But of course, it ended up with Samson moving out of home, going to Timnah, spending time there, being deceived by this woman, being coerced by this woman, and it all went to pot. You've got a few other times in Samson's life, in Judges 15, verse 8 as well, where Samson got really mad at the end of his marriage breakdown, and he attacked people viciously, slaughtered many of them, and then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Etam. Where did he end up when he was in a damaged place? In a cave by himself. Do you know, true strength comes if you're in a, a dangerous time in life, if you're in a a time in life where things are just spinning around, the place you need to be is with your support team. It's with your church, it's with your pastors, it's with your friends, it's with your parents, it's with people that want the very best for you. It is not, it's not a good thing. You don't gain any strength by running away and hiding in a cave, isolated by yourself. When you're weak, when things have gone wrong for you, when things are not good for you, the best place for you to be is around people who love you, people who want to bring comfort, strengthen you, not people who want to hide you in a cave, take you away from life, take you away from all the support networks, because all they're doing is robbing you from the strength that God wants to give you, that true strength that he wants to give you. So get close to your family and your support network, because your support network, your support team, is going to be something that God has given you to provide you with great, true strength. The next one, number two, lifestyle choices. Well, this is an easy one. Samson was supposed to be a Nazarite. He took a vow when he was, um, well, his parents took a vow for him, and he knew the vow that he was going to live, and he chose to live it. And he promised to live a certain way. And in Judges 6, you can see the basics of that. And that is basically that he won't cut his hair. He won't have anything to do with the fruit of the vine. No grapes, no raisins, no seeds, no skins, no wine. Nothing to do with grapes. And he was going to have nothing to do, and the third thing was nothing to do with death of any sort whatsoever. Even if his father died, he wasn't allowed to go anywhere near anything. He couldn't even handle animals for his own sacrifice. He had to give them to the priest to, to sort out. This is part of the Nazarite vow, was actually no haircut, nothing to do with grapes, and nothing to do with death of any sort whatsoever. And he was called to be separate. And so when you look at Samson's lifestyle choices, he did a few really strange things. In Judges 14, verse 5, Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and his mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, should have never gone anywhere near them, should have never walked through them, should have never really gone to a place that the whole town was known for its vineyards. This is a place that Samson should have never had anything to do with. He shouldn't have gone there, shouldn't have been there. So there's no surprise that trouble then follows. And in Judges 14, verse 6 to 9, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so that he tore a lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a yawn goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. They were Nazarites, no death, in a vineyard, Killing an animal. Ugh. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, he went back to marry her. He turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. In it was a swarm of bees and some honey, which he scooped out with his hands as he ate when he went along. And then he rejoined his parents, and he gave them some too. And they ate it, but he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. 
Why? Because he should have had nothing to do with the lion, nothing to do with the vineyard. He broke the vow of his mother and father, and he broke the vow of himself because of his lifestyle choices. His mother and father didn't even know that they were breaking their vow when he gave them the honey, but he gave them the honey from something that was ceremonial, unclean. So easy in our lifestyle choices to end up corrupt and away from what God wants for us. And then our strength ends up not being there. If we've got the right choices with God and we live the right lifestyle choices, God will give us true strength. We shouldn't do things that are gonna separate us in our lifestyle choices from what God wants us to have. So Samson marries this, this woman in Judges 14 and uh, the town gives him 30 companions. So he's now got 13 Philistine mates who are with him for the week's feast of party and beyond. So in Judges 14 uh, verse 11 it says, when he appeared he was given 30 companions. And then you read a little bit further on in Judges 14, 20, Samson gets really mad, he storms out, he leaves. When he comes back later to find his wife, who's his wife been given to? One of his companions. His lifestyle choices put him in place with 30 friends that did not have his best interests at heart. One of them chose to sleep with his wife and take her as his own wife so much so that his father wouldn't give the woman back to Samson. Actually, his lifestyle choices put him with 30 really duff people, 30 Philistines, 30 enemies that were nothing to do with the people that Samson was supposed to be leading, supposed to be building with, supposed to be part of his life. Samson should have had 30 friends who were Israelites who were going to be part of his army that he could have built up, protected, been with, and they'd have had his best interests at heart. 30 Israelites would have given Samson great strength. 30 Philistines cheated him, were not there for him, did not give him any strength whatsoever. So are your lifestyle choices giving you strength? Are they part of God's purpose for you to have true strength? Are your friendships giving you true strength? Or are you putting yourself in a position where God doesn't want you to be? And we haven't even got onto Samson's lifestyle choices when it came to women. Okay, number three, God's plan or our selfishness because actually there's a big difference between them very often. Samson was an incredibly selfish guy. He knew what was right and what was wrong and he chose to keep following what he wanted to do. And this is a proverb from Proverbs 5, verse 3 to 5. Women, don't take this personally. This is from the Bible, okay? But this definitely accounted to Samson and his women. Samson, uh, Proverbs 5, verse 3 to 5. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. Ouch. After Samson's first failed marriage... He then apparently spent these 20 years getting it right, leading Israel. You think he would have learned his lesson. And then we get to Judges 16. In Judges 16, verse 1. One day, Samson went to Gaza, wrong side of the mountains, Philistine territory, not where he should have been. And there he saw a prostitute, the leader of Israel, the leader of his people for 20 years, goes to the enemy's camp and finds a prostitute and sleeps with her, or at least spent the night with her. And uh, then, Judges 16, verse 4, sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the Valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Wrong side of the mountains, wrong set of people, not where his strength should have been with his own... You're getting the message here, aren't you, of Samson? And you know the story of Delilah. The stupid thing was, was that she tricked him and he found out about it. And she tricked him and he found out about it. And she tricked him and he found out about it. And he was still totally and utterly unprepared to do anything about it. 
You even get to the place where Judges 16, verse 20, Samson has just told her about the true source of his strength. He's given it all away. This is him, wrong side of the valley, with the wrong people, with the wrong woman, in the wrong situation, who's gone through this situation where he's had his arms tied, he's had this tied, he's had his hair tied, and now he's actually told of the truth. And in Judges 16, 20, she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Do you know a time comes in our lifestyle choices where we end up so far away from God? Samson still thought he had all the strength of God with him. And he hadn't realized how far his lifestyle choices had taken him away from God's purpose and God's plan. I am so grateful for God's grace in each and every one of our lives and my own life that it doesn't matter where we go, we can turn our back round, sort it out with God, and he is gracious, forgives us, and brings us back. But Samson got it wrong, kept getting it wrong, continued to get it wrong, stayed with a woman who he knew was tricking him and trying to deceive him away from what God wanted for him and chose to keep going down that route. Don't let any of us have lifestyle choices that keep us moving away from what God wants for you, or else your true strength is just going to do what Samson's did and eventually leave you. It doesn't mean that God's grace can't restore you, but you won't be in a position of true strength. You're in a position of true strength. When Delilah tried to get it out of him the first time, he should have gone, whoa. But he had the wrong company. He had the wrong team. He was in the wrong place with the wrong people. He had no support network around him. He had no wise choices with him. And this was just moving him further away from God's plan. It's really, really tough. So we need to remember some of these verses. Psalm 103, verse 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Verse 5 says, Because he satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth, or strength, as some translations have it, is renewed like the eagles. If you want your strength renewed, don't forget God's plan. Don't forget God's benefits, because he wants to satisfy you. You don't need to worry about trying to satisfy yourself. Actually, do what God wants, and he will satisfy you. You being satisfied is something that God wants for you. It is part of his plan. If Samson would have listened to this and got it right, do you know he could have been this incredible person for God and God could have satisfied him immeasurably. Instead, he chose to do it his own way and chose to want to go and do what he wanted to do, firstly with a the prostitute, then with Delilah, and just kept getting it wrong. Number four. It's all about God's provision. Do you know God provides for you, strength for you. In a moment when you need it, God will provide for you. Judges 15, verse 18 and 19. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, you have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall at the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow in the place of lay and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned and he revived. So the spring was called and it's still there. Do you know, when you're in a desperate position of need and you call out, God will give you nourishment. He'll give you a provision. He'll give you what you need. What you've got to do, drink. Because God always wants to provide for us. But we've got to drink. And when we drink of all that God's got planned for us, then your strength is going to return. Then you're going to have the true strength that God wants for you. In 1 Peter 5 verse 10, it says, The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you've suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, make you firm, and make you steadfast. And number five, this is all about anointing. And this is something that true strength comes when you're anointed. Samson, every single time he had great power. Let's read some of these things. Judges 14, verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. 
so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young, young, young goat. Samson 14, 19, the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power and he went down and struck 30 of their men. In Judges 15, verse 14, the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes became like charred flax and just dropped off him. Let's not forget, me and you are supposed to have the same Holy Spirit power living inside us. In Acts 1, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Why? For his witness. And in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of of love, of self-discipline. They're all things that Samson really struggled with. Power, love, and self-discipline. Today, there's two people sat here. There's people who are living your ordinary life, not putting into place all that God has got planned for you. You are who you are right now. Or there's the who you could be when you truly embrace the true strength that God wants you to have to achieve all that he's got for you. It's your choice. You either choose the mediocre or you choose the exceptional. You choose to be weak and not follow the things that God's got planned for you. You choose to have God's strength and achieve something incredible for him. Who are you gonna choose to be? Somebody who's weak and flaky or somebody who's gonna get some true strength and is going to accept all that God has got for you. God wants you to be strong. He wants you when you're in the middle of a tough time for his spirit to come on you, for you to have strength around you, for you to have a good lifestyle, for you to follow his plan, for you to be provided for and be anointed that you can go and do something incredible for God in that moment. And he wants you to do that again and again and again and again and again and again for the whole of your life. God doesn't want you to just have one moment where you rely on him for true strength. He wants your lifestyle to be something that relies on him for incredible strength. Samson was just like you or me. But when he did something incredible for God with his true strength, oh, it was just, it's an awesome privilege that we've got that God can use us. In Judges 6, this is something that we need to have as our lifestyle choice, and this is from Gideon. Judges 6, verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel. Am I not sending you? It's the same for you and me today. God is sending you. And if God is sending you, we sang some great songs this morning, the almighty God of heaven and earth is sending you. Who is your rock? Who is your strength? Who is your fortress? Who is the almighty God of heaven and earth? God is sending you with everything that we need. In Psalm 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When we understand the truth of who God is, we've got incredible, true strength. So today I want to challenge you. How's your support team? How's your relationship with church, with good people around you who can give you wisdom, who can build you up? What's your lifestyle choices like? Are they in line with what God has purpose for you? Are they in line with what the Bible says that you ought to be doing? How closely are you following God's plan for your life? Or are you just doing what feels right for you in the moment rather than following what you know is God's long-term plan? Are you drinking of the provision that God's got put in front of you? When God's made an opportunity for you, are you taking of that opportunity to gain that strength that you need? And are you operating in the anointing of God for that specific purpose that he's given for you to do? Let's pray together. Well, thank you for your grace. That means that it doesn't matter what we've already done. You want to restore us and you want to give us great strength each and every day. Lord, I pray for those people today who've been struggling in their past with, with stuff that's mean they've not been achieving all they need to achieve with you. Give them strength today. 
Help them today to put things back in place in their life that they need to do. Lord, for some, of, for some other people who are suffering maybe with a bit of mediocrity, Lord, help them be dynamic for you as they start to take steps into all that you've got with a great sense of strength. For people who are facing challenges today, Lord, give them a provision that they can be anointed by you to achieve a great victory for you. Lord, I pray that you'll help every single one of us fulfill the plans and the purposes that you've got for us in our lives. Don't let us be scared, don't let us be weak, but let us be people who are filled with great strength to achieve your plans and your purposes right here in our lives. Lord, be with each and every one of us uh, for the rest of this week. God bless us as we go from this place and enjoy a great bank holiday weekend. Amen. Amen. Thank you.